the uh, first phase of our riverfront development project. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time here. I just wanted to do some introductions. We have representatives from uh, Florence and Hutchison that's been working on our permitting process. We have uh, individuals or representatives here from uh, Red Wing Ecological Services out of Louisville, Kentucky. And they're going to be presenting most of the information that uh, you'll see tonight. And there's a portion at the end of, the, of this uh, meeting or this presentation where we'll take public comments uh, in association with uh, the in, uh, environmental assessment document of, of the purposes of this meeting. So with that being said, I want to turn it on to uh, turn it over to Florence and Hutchison, uh, John Farmer, uh, to kick this off. And then um, if you can't see or hear, we'd ask for you to move closer to the front and maybe you'll get a better uh, view of that. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, again, this is the environmental assessment public hearing for the Paducah Waterfront Development Project Phase 1. I'm John Farmer with Florence and Hutchison. And uh, the first question we need to, to answer is why are we here? Uh, why are we required to have a public meeting? Uh, the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 established a mandate for federal agencies to determine ecological, social, and cultural uh, impacts. The project uh, that we're discussing is being funded through state and federal grants. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, uh, FHWA, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. Now, the NEPA Act does not apply to those projects which only have state funds. So since we're using federal funds for the project, that's why we have to go through this, this federal process. And it, it could be uh, anything from we're using federal property, federal money, or federal permits. Those things require that we go through the National Environmental Policy Act. As part of the requirements under NEPA, an assessment of the impacts uh, to the environment is documented either in an environmental assessment or an environmental impact statement. Uh, if you don't know, know the significance of the impacts or if you don't think there may be impacts at all, you can go through the environmental assessment process and that's what we've done with this project. The four basic uh, parts of the EA or environmental assessment that we must address are the purpose and need, the purpose of the project and why we need it, uh, the alternatives analysis, both location and design, of course the environmental impacts and planning and public involvement. And we at this point have covered three and a half of these bullets and today we're taking care of the public involvement process. So tonight we're presenting the EA document and hope to receive public comment from the audience. Some background, the city of Paducah identified a need for the comprehensive plan to enhance its riverfront. JJR Consulting prepared a riverfront redevelopment plan and the plan was adopted by the city back in 2007. The plan includes a comprehensive approach to planning, development, implementation, and enhancement concepts along the riverfront. And as a part of that, the boat launch and the marina transient dock projects were identified and funded as phase one of the plan. So going back to the, the four components of the environmental assessment, the first one, remember, is the purpose and need. So we'll talk about the purpose and need of the projects. The purpose of the boat launch is to relocate the existing boat ramp facility at the end of Broadway Street to somewhere else on the riverfront. The, oops. We're going to have to switch. I'm having computer glitches here.
So again, the, the uh, purpose of the boat lodge is to relocate it from ex existing location on the, at the end of Broadway Street. <clears throat> and it is needed to reduce congestion and vehicle parking associated with activities at the end of Broadway Street. Uh, the Marina Transit Dock, its purpose is to provide accommodations for transient boaters and local recreational boat owners. And we want that to be downtown. The need is to provide loading and unloading facilities for transient boats and a protected marina with associated facilities. This gives you a, a feel for where we are in the big picture of things. Uh, the confluence of the, the rivers there and uh, the downtown portion of Paducah. And this gives you a little closer view as to where we, at the end of Broadway Street, we want to remove that boat, facility, boat ramp facility and place it somewhere else. And also introduce the Marina Transient Dock in the location where the orange arrow is. So now that we have a con conceptual design and a, a context design, uh, we have the ideas. We also have an idea of how they'll fit in with the rest of the facilities along the river. The next thing we need to do is talk about where should we put these. And so we go through a location alternative analysis. The location alternatives were considered and eliminated using a hierarchy of constraints. Uh, we wanted them close to downtown, so that's one of the constraints, the distance from downtown. We uh, would like them to be on publicly owned properties so we don't have to purchase properties. Uh, another constraint is the level of existing development on the properties in question and the level of probable impact to cultural, social, and environmental resources. So the sites were selected to minimize development cost and environmental impact while maintaining, maintaining close proximity to downtown Paducah. So for the boat lots, we had three location alternatives. The first location alternative, as you see in the yellow box, is uh, southeast and contigu contiguous to the Midwest Gas Terminal Barge off of the North 6th Street, Campbell Street intersection on city, county-owned property. Well, this location was rejected because there was not enough room for ingress, egress, parking, and I think the zoning was inappropriate also. The second location alternative, number two, the purple box, uh, was undeveloped property about 0.6 miles downstream of number one on city-owned property and downstream of the Paducah city water intakes. It was rejected because of the uh, proximity of the combined sewer outfall of the wastewater treatment plant in the vicinity. So we moved it up uh, uh, 400 feet upstream, still within the city owned property. And so this is considered the consens consensus location for the boat launch facility. What about the Marina Transit Dock? A little more complicated. Location alternative number one, as shown in the yellow boxes. Uh, the Marina was actually at the Executive Inn property at that time on city county owned property. And the Transient Dock was at the end of Broadway Street on city owned property. But you can see they're separate. And that's one of the reasons why this uh, location scheme was rejected. The marina was 0.7 miles from downtown, and we really felt like the marina and transit dock should be cohesive, a cohesive site by, the, by themselves. Location alternative number two in the purple, again, you can see they're separate. The marina was on both Crounts and city-owned property north of the Carson Four River Center, and the transit dock was at the end of Broadway Street, also on city-owned property. But also, also, in addition to them being separate, what uh, helped us reject this was that the marina, we felt like the marina may impede navigation and development where it's located there. L location alternative number three is in the red. 
The facilities were combined on the river between MLK Drive and Jefferson Street. Uh, and this site was rejected due to impacts due to impacts to freshwater mussels. Okay. computer or if it's the connection. either a gremlin in his computer or it's our network connection is starting to go down. Usually I use the arrow. Find your page again. Thank you. Alrighty. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, let's just go back over them. Uh, start back over. This, we're talking about the location alternatives for the Marina Transient Dock. Uh, a little more complicated, as we as we said before. Let's go with the first location alternative was uh, in the yellow boxes. Uh, the marina was at the Executive Inn property on city-owned property, city-county-owned property. The Transient Dock was at the end of Broadway Street on city-owned property. As you can see, they're separate. And so we felt like we, we wanted those to be a one cohesive, uh, one cohesive project. And the marina is 0.7 miles da from downtown. Uh, so that was rejected for those reasons. Location alternative number two, which is the purple boxes. The marina is, is on Crounce and city-owned property north of the Carson Four River Center. And the transient dock was at the end of Broadway Street on city-owned property. Again, 
it's obvious that they're separate and we we felt like we wanted a cohesive project uh, also it was rejected because the marina we felt like may impede navigation and development were its position there location alternative number three which is in the red uh, we have both projects together uh, they're, they're combined on the river between MLK Drive and Jefferson Street. Uh, this was rejected, this site was rejected due to the impacts to freshwater mussels. So we shifted it 500 feet downstream to lessen mussel impact. And this is considered the consensus location for the Marina Transient Dock, and that is in the green box underneath the arrow. So what's there at those positions? I, I thought it'd be important to, to tell you what's there. At the boat launch where we propose it, there's existing undeveloped agricultural field and woodland between the Levee and Ohio River near 6th and Burnett Street. Uh, the Marina Transient Dock is near existing Schultz Park and the riverbank between the flood wall and Ohio River westward from the end of Jefferson Street. And I've got some, this is a USGS topographic map giving you an indication of where those consensus locations are. You can see the boat launch uh, not only includes riverfront property, but it also will be uh, reconstructing, enhancing Burnett Street. Uh, and then you can see the Marina Transient Dock position between Jefferson Street uh, going toward MLK and out, of course, out into the river. And this gives you a different kind of view, an aerial photograph view of the same the boat launch and the marina transient dock and their consensus locations. So we had a conceptual design. In other words, we had an idea of what we wanted to put in both places, though they're not final. What we wanted really at the boat launch was a five-lane boat ramp with a courtesy dock. We wanted a, a, about 100 parking spaces. We wanted to reconstruct Burnett Street from 6th to 8th Street. And we needed an access road up and over the flood wall to the ramp. At the Marina Transit Dock, our ideas were to have a floating dock system with a 150-slip marina. We wanted to be able to refuel folks. We wanted a store, office building. We wanted to enhance Schultz Park, and we also wanted to make parking enhancements. So we, we, we've worked through the conceptual design, context design. We've, we've decided, we've had ideas to where we wanted to locate it, and we have a preferred location. So the next thing is to, to decide what to put there. And so we went through design alternatives uh, synthesis. For the boat launch, basically we had two alternatives of design. We had uh, one alternative, alternative number one included five lane boat ramp with a courtesy dock, paved parking and trailering area for about 100 parking places, an access road to the site as an extension of Burnett Street and constructed in the location of an existing gravel dirt access road that's out there on the, along the eastern boundary. Alternative two includes the same thing on the, as alternative number one, but we felt like we needed uh, 4.3 acres of future parking area, so we decided to go with alternative number two as consensus design alternative, and that's a diagram of what it would look like. You can, uh, you can see the boat ramp, you can see parking spaces there, 6th Street running uh, toward the northwest and southeast, and the gravel road on the eastern side. So that's a diagram of the consensus design. Now, so, now, so now we're talking about Marina Transit Dock, which is again a lot more complicated than a boat ramp. We basically had th uh, three design alternatives for the Marina Transit Dock. And alternative number one had three concepts within it, so we'll, I'll try to explain it and shed some light on that. Uh, each alternative would serve the purpose and need by providing loading, unloading facilities for transient boats and providing a marina 
with facilities that will allow transient local boaters to dock in a protected marina, that's an important word to remember, a protected marina near downtown. And, and each of the three alternatives would enhance Schultz Park at the same time. Instead of starting with alternative one, I'm gonna start with alternative two and work back, back toward that. So uh, alternative number two was a sheet pile retaining wall system. It included mass fill uh, placed within a vertical sheet pile wall. This, this provides protection of the marina transit dock from floating debris, ice, and may possibly barge impact. Access to the floating dock is provided by you know, elevated walkway However, the river's edge will not be accessible, and that's important to remember. Land-based improvements to Schultz Park will, will be limited to reconstruction of parking and enhanced vegetation. This alternative was rejected because the access to the river for non-boaters is limited, and we wanted to be able to get the public to the river to connect the people who don't boat to the river also. It has minimum enhancement to Schultz Park, very few amenities, amenities for the park, and it has very high capital construction costs compared to the other, other alternatives. Number three would be a floating barrier alternative. It consists of a series of precast barges linked together to form a, a floating dock string. It will be attached to multiple piers constructed at intervals along the dock. Uh, this alternative will provide protection of marina transient dock from floating debris, uh, will provide wave attenuation and access to the dock. Again, the land-based improvements to Schultz Park are limited to reconstruction of the parking, some slope protection, walkways, and enhanced vegetation. So this alternative was also rejected because the piers would obstruct the view shed from the park there'll be a significant maintenance obligation of the floating guide rail system. We felt like there's an unacceptable risk to, pub in, to the public in the event of barge impact. And again, there's high capital construction costs with this compared to the other alternatives. So backing up to alternative number one, which is a mass fill, uh, Three different concepts within this alternative were looked at. They would each enhance Schultz Park. They would have landform and shore protection, roadways and paths, an overlook, a gangway system, a transient dock marina, and park amenities in common, each of the concepts. The landform provides protection of the marina transient dock from floating debris, ice, and barge impact for all river stages, which is important to remember. Each concept is similar in design, but varies in size and what it offers, okay? So concept number one has the fewest amenities, and it has the, the fewest amount of cubic yards of fill. Concept two has more amenities and more fill, and concept three has the most amenities offered and has the most cubic yards of fill. So the consensus design alternative is concept three, uh, with the addition of two, two other items, two other amenities, rock, rock outcropping and vertical axis wind turbines. It's hard to see, I understand. But the, the three concepts were looked at. Basically, the consensus concept was the, a combination of what we looked at for concepts one through three uh, with the... Uh, with without the observation tower, without steps down to the Ohio River. But we did add rock outcroppings to the river and vertical axis wind turbines. So you can see uh, the consensus amenities for the marina transient dock. So here it is in summary. Uh, the design alternatives for the marina transient dock, you can see there's three mass fill, sheet piles, and the floating barrier. The mass fill was anywhere from 11 to 13 million dollars. Sheet piles, 17 million. And the floating barrier, about 16 million. So you can see why the sheet piles were, uh, that alternative was eliminated due to high construction cost, low life expectancy, and it isolated the public, those who don't boat from the riverfront. The floating barrier, uh, 
alternative was eliminated again because it's very high maintenance and there was a risk to set, uh, the public and uh, elevated structural damage potential due to its design. So the consensus again is the mass fill and the three concepts were combined together to get a preferred design at about $13 million. And there's a, a picture of the consensus and you can see the, where the former executive end used to sit uh, and that will be the position of the Marina Transit Dock. So we have a preferred location and a preferred design that gives us a preferred, preferred project. Well, we've talked about design, alternatives, location alternatives, and the purpose and need. So the third, I guess the third uh, branch of the NEPA document is what are we doing to the environment? Find out the Im impacts to the environment. The environmental assessment documents uh, the project purpose and need, design alternatives, and location alternatives. But we need to also find the environmental impacts associated with a proposed project. And so that's the next step. So we, we had technical studies conducted for both the boat launch and the marina transient dock sites, which included uh, how we impacted the floodplain any streams and, or wetlands, impacts to threatened and, and endangered species. We had archaeological site, uh, archaeological and historic uh, studies done for any archaeological sites that may be hidden underground. Uh, and we also did a, we also looked for hazardous materials or wastes on the projects. Some additional impact analyses comp completed include noise impacts. What's this going to do to the air quality? Uh, visual impacts, uh, farmland impacts. The boat launch project area itself did have a, did have a does have a small uh, crop grown on it. Uh, what kind of impacts it may have as far as environmental justice? Are we being unfair to certain people? Uh, and do we have any displacements or relocations of residents or businesses? This is in the EA document. I know it's hard to see here, but we have EA documents available if you want to see this. Uh, the, we found that the boat launch uh, did impact 5, 0.5 acres of the Ohio River and uh, about 9.2 acres of wetlands within its boundary. But those are going to be mitigated uh, in order to get the permit to construct those, construct the boat launch. We will have to mitigate for the wetlands and uh, and for the impact to the Ohio River. Uh, state, and threaten, state and federal threatened and endangered species, we will also mitigate for those. Uh, we are impacting, of course, the Ohio River. We are impacting farmland, but minimally, as I dis uh, discussed. And we will uh, obtain state and federal permits, environmental permits and construction permits before we ever set foot on the, on the project. For the Marina Transit Dock, uh, we, we have about 6.2 acres of the Ohio River that we'll be impacting as far as not necessarily footprint, but uh, if you place the project within a square, you'd have 6.2 acres. Of course, we're in the floodplain. Uh, we don't have any wetlands there. We will mitigate for state and federal threatened and endangered species that are impacted. We have minimal visual impacts due to the structures uh, necessary for the marine and transit dock will have construction activities that will uh, have minimal impacts. We will impact Schultz Park, but for the better. Uh, though we still have to determine impacts, uh, Schultz Park is considered a Section 4F property, which takes in parks and publicly owned spaces. So we will enhance Schultz Park, and we will obtain, again, state and federal permits before construction begins. So once you have impacts and you, and you know those impacts and you mitigate for those, you have environmental commitments that you make. And these are straight from the environmental assessment. So we do intend to uh, keep, keep our part of the bargain uh, through environmental commitments. As you can see, uh, I'll read some of these. Removal of trees for the boat launch will be coordinated with the Fish and Wildlife Service through a memorandum of agreement due to the Indiana bats maternity roosting 
possibility there. Uh, that will be uh, executed prior to initiation of construction. We will, uh, we are under, right now we are consulting with Fish and Wildlife Service regarding impacts to freshwater mussel species at the boat launch and marina transit dock. And that will be completed prior to the approval of the finding of no significant impact document. And that's the next document beyond what we're talking about here. Once we get public comment and uh, uh, we'll incorporate those comments into this next document, which will also have to be approved by the, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and FHWA, just like the EA. Um, another one, we'll mitigate for boat launch impacts to 9.2 acres of wetlands through on-site uh, wetland, forested wetland preservation, preservation of upland forest and uh, restoration of forested wetland. And uh, we'll be doing that on the same project site. We won't have to go off site to do that. So that's the mitigation for that. Some others will be getting the environmental permits, of course. We'll uh, have construction noise impacts limited, limited by working during normal business day, normal business hours. We'll minimize airborne particles during construction. Uh, we'll consult with uh, Kentucky Heritage Council on visual impacts from the marina transient dock structures. And that will be done, of course, before the finding of no significant impact document also. So once you have all the environmental impacts and you have those commitments that are made, uh, KYTC and FHWA puts in an environmental, environmental statement. And by their signature, they're agreeing with this statement. The environmental commitments have been made that will eliminate significant environmental impacts associated with the proposed boat launch and marina transit dock projects. Therefore, if the environmental commitments are complied with, the 6th Street and Burnett Street boat launch and the marina transit dock will not significantly affect social, ecological, or cultural resources as defined under the NEPA Act. Okay. So where are, we, where are we right today in the NEPA process? We've taken care of the purpose and need. We've talked about alternatives, both location and design. We've talked about what we've done to uh, determine environmental impacts, and we've done planning and today we're doing public involvement, okay? What have we done today to, as far as planning and public outreach? Uh, we met with the Corps back in 2006. You can see this, this process basically started around 2006. Uh, there was a bus tour to, uh, of Chattanooga and Evansville to, to see what they were doing there. In March of 2006, we met with riverfront property owners in that, that summer. Uh, there was a revised preliminary riverfront plan in the fall of 2006. We've met with various regulatory agencies for the uh, for six years. Uh, we had a public meeting two years ago in March on the environmental assessment, and here we are today with an, a public hearing on the approved environmental assessment. Uh, and today we're going to get public comments from you, hopefully, and incorporate that uh, into a Fonzie, Fonzie document. The project status, the uh, EA, which we're discussing now, has been prepared and approved. It was pr approved last month by the state and, and uh, Federal Highway Administration. Environmental permitting is ongoing as we speak. Uh, biological opinion on impacts to freshwater mussels at both projects is ongoing with Fish and Wildlife Service. The finding of no significant impact document will be developed after we obtain permits and other agreements and public comments from, from you. Uh, the project design is approximately 90% complete, so we know what we're going to put on the ground. And construction is anticipated, according to our calendar, next summer. Okay, and if you want to look at the calendar, it's available on that easel right there. So at this time, I'd like to invite Rick Murphy back up, and he'll discuss the funding for the project and how we can get comments from you guys. Thank you, John. Um, this slide here represents the various, uh, I guess, funding opportunities that have been made available to the city of Paducah through various federal agencies and or uh, grant monies. Uh, quickly going over those, we have an FHWA ISD grant of $2.3 million dollars. 
That will be associated with the boat launch at 6th and Burnett. Uh, FHWA grant source pending of $4.3 million uh, on the Riverfront Phase 1. A HUD grant of $3 million on River phase, uh, Riverfront uh, Phase 1. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services big grant, and that stands for Boating Infrastructure uh, uh, grant, uh, $910,000, and the uh, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Services grant of $175,000 for, um, and that's actually on the boat launch project that is not on the Riverfront Phase 1 project, that's for building boat launch. For that And so with that total, we have uh, $10.685 million, and the estimate, uh, estimated total project cost of the boat launch and the uh, Riverfront Phase one uh, project itself is $17.3 million. And what I'd like to do right now is ask if you have a public comment uh, to help us out a little bit. We're actually using technology to document this. So if you would come to the podium because this microphone is recording this so we can put this on a CD to help us, I guess, uh, with uh, our FONSI document and to include that in, in this as part of the, the record. Uh, speak clearly into this microphone, if you would please, uh, so all can hear. This is also being televised uh, for all the citizens of Paducah who, who've tuned in as well. Please provide your name, your address, and uh, the city or uh, of residence. Comments will be limit, limited to three minutes. Now, work with us on this uh, because We'll, we'll use technology and just ask that, you know, you wrap it up within three minutes. Uh, environmental assessment EA document is available for review until June the 14th of 2012 at the Public Works Engineering Office. That's right over here in City Hall in my office. And written, written comments will be accepted until June the 14th. Uh, and then at that time, that written comment period will close uh, because of, and just we're just following the, the regulations for the uh, public comment period for that because we have to wrap it up and then put it in a FONSI document. So if anybody would like to, uh, please step up to the podium and we'll receive public comments at this time. Okay, we've got uh, Bennett Chambers. Is Bennett Chambers here? Okay, so... Uh, Okay, Roger, thank you. I'm Roger Malugin, I'm a resident of West Paducah and I'm a boat owner. I uh, don't know how many of you may be boat owners, but uh, Traditionally, the wharf has been at the downtown foot of Broadway. There's a reason for this. Uh, the shoot, we have a natural harbor here in Paducah. This is the chute inside Owens Island and Cuba Towhead Island. This is a protected area. This is where all the commercial docks have been. Uh, the area we're looking at right now, there's been no development in that area. There's a reason for this. There's currents down there and I'm afraid any of this construction is going to develop currents that's going to be even worse. Uh, and also, if we close the foot of Broadway, I don't think we really need to do this. All this has quite a bit of momentum established already, but if we, we need to keep the foot of Broadway open, it's a lot better area there we don't have the danger involved that we do further down. And there's quite a bit of property at, inside the uh, Owens Island that has been traditionally used that is a natural harbor. It would save us a lot of money and be a lot better position for boating. Thank you. Uh, Nick Warren. Nick Warren, I live at 1935 Jefferson, Paducah. Um, my family's boated on the Ohio River, I guess, for 50 years. I uh, remember a number of marinas there. 
uh, I was a steering committee member on the original committee that went and investigated marinas in Chattanooga and Evansville, and I had always thought that the marina notion of our plan was a bit flawed. Um, first of all, it started off as 300 slips. The way that was documented is JJR took the seven counties, totaled up the number of registered boats, and said normally we get 10% that would be in a marina. They didn't take any consideration of what's at Kentucky Lake, Barkley Lake, and so forth. Uh, they also didn't take in consideration how many boats are trailered. Many boats are trailered. Bass boaters don't like to have their boat in the water when they're fishing. Um, so those are just not, uh, I think, the number on that, but I think it's been revised back to 150. Is that correct? Yes, More or less. Um, I just think the cost, I think the transient dock is something that is needed and will help the economic development of Paducah. The recreational part, the, lay, the river is dangerous. It has many more towboat operations in it now than it did in the 50s. There's no sandbars left to as destinations. There's no restaurants. In other words, it's just not really a purpose of recreational boating in the uh, Ohio River and Tennessee River at this time. Um, there used to be. The, uh, the cost that is being spent on the recreational marina, I feel, could better be spent on land-based improvements. One thing has changed drastically since 2006 is we no longer have the executive end. Now we have an opportunity to recover that land for the public use of which it was a park prior to that. And I would rather see the dollars that are spent on the marina side, especially with the protection element that's uh, part of the towhead, I guess, to keep barges from um, damaging boats. But that money, and I don't remember exactly what that appropriation was, uh, Mr. Murphy, but that for the marina itself and the, non, the non-transient part, the recreational part. But it was a good sized component and I would rather see it on land-based improvements in Barkley Park to return that to a, what we might call a uh, festival, river festival park. So my concern is just on the recreation marina. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that would like to make a public comment that may not have signed this sheet, please? Any questions that I might be able to answer the specific to the project that maybe uh, would be helpful? Please come, please come to the microphone. I guess, Rick, uh, if you can confirm the amount of dollars that are spent in the recreational marina portion, not the transit, or is it broken out enough that you can state that? Okay. At the current time, there's no funding for the marina. That would come in future funds and or a future public uh, private process. Uh, these, uh, I guess, uh, uh, visual uh, components that have been shared, they show the marina as a future uh, dithered area because we don't have the funding that's available here that's been shown in this 10.685 million. There's no funding for that. That's we're in phase one and or phase. I want to refer to it as a phase one A even though this document is for the project in its entirety for the, uh, I guess, environmental assessment document, uh, what we're trying to do initially is to build a connection to the riverfront, i.e. expand the park, be able to uh, let our public uh, engage the river with a transient boat dock. Our original project showed 1,200 linear foot of transient boat dock initially our funding will only allow us to build 400 feet and then as future funding comes available then we would either add to the transient boat dock and or initiate some uh, marina uh, slips for that but we do want to be able to support the transient boaters that may come through here with fuel uh, and any services that they might need one thing that, uh, and, and I'm glad uh, Mr. Warren brought this up, uh, 
the dynamics on the river are changing because I don't know the schedule on the Olmstead Dam, but once the Olmstead Dam is complete, it's my understanding that Dam 52 and Dam 53 will be removed. Uh, and then those of us that are familiar with the river, the only, uh, I guess, restrictions will be at that time will be the Kentucky Lake Lock and Dam, which is about 15 miles upstream of us, the Barkley Lake and uh, Lock and Dam, which is about, I'd say, 25 to 30 miles upstream of us, by the way the river flows, and then the Smithland Pool uh, Dam. Now, you, you take that distance down to the Olmstead Lock and Dam, we're talking maybe 50 or 60 miles of unimpeded uh, potential of recreation activity that today those of us that do boat and do use the river dam 52 is a, is kind of a no-fly zone for um, i would say recreational boaters because it's more for commercial but not for recreational boaters and then of course dam 53 you take those out of the mix and then we've got a pretty long stretch of water that's unimpeded that could be enjoyed by not only the commercial traffic, but also by the recreational boater. Any other questions? Any other comments? Yes, sir. Will the foot of Broadway be closed I'm glad you asked that to, uh, you know, vehicle traffic and launching ramp? I'm glad you asked that question. question is, will the foot of Broadway be closed to vehicle traffic and the launching ramp? At this point or this time in the project, the answer to that question is no. Um, this project uh, in its entirety has three phases. Uh, we had, as far as the JJR plan for the master, uh, the master plan that was developed. Uh, we had this initial phase, which was the transient boat dock and marina in its entirety, uh, but we're only getting to build a portion of that now. The second phase was uh, a portion of land that was uh, just upstream, uh, directly in front of, um, I, I refer to it as the mural opening, that's half block of Water Street, whereas we our intent was to build a, um, a, an excursion boat landing that would be land-based. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people are of the opinion that the excursion boats would land on this transient boat dock. Structurally, it, it will not hold that. It's, that's not its, its intent. However, phase two of that was to build a land-based landing area so uh, those queens would not be putting their gangways down at the foot of Broadway. Uh, that's making that area congested. And uh, so, Phase two would be for that. But however, economies changed, um, rules changed. Uh, the Delta Queen has a wood hull. It's permanently moored or will be permanently moored somewhere. It can't travel up and down uh, and do excursion boat activities. The Mississippi Queen has been scrapped. Uh, she, her metal is in bridges and in probably in cars uh, by now. And the only excursion boat that we have that's operating is the American Queen, which brings me to phase three of our, I guess, Riverfront Master Plan, which is that area that is identified in the Master Plan as some, some activity taking place between Broadway and Kentucky. I cannot stress enough that this project does not, the initial phase of this project, does not impact what's going on at the foot of Broadway as we know it today. If that does occur, that will occur several years from now, and it will be by, uh, even, even though our master plan was adopted in 2007, that's subject to being, I guess, re-reviewed because these plans are dynamic, they change over time. The portion of the project that we're talking about today is the Schultz Park and the boat launch project. Should we need to have something to replace what's going on at the foot of Broadway. We have other, other entities that are interested in that. We have 
uh, the River Heritage Museum. They have desires in that area. No formal plans have been adopted. So that, that area is somewhat malleable, but no definite plans have been decided and or adopted at this time. Any other comments? Thank you for attending. And if there's anything that you all would like to, for us to address, remember that the document is over in uh, my office. I'm sure it can be reviewed at Florence and Hutchinson as well, should you all have any comments. Jason's reminding me of, of these comment forms. If you would like to make a written comment, we'd like for you to fill this out and provide it to our office so that that can be, uh, become a part of the document or, uh, for gathering our FONSI. If that, no further comments or questions, I, we will conclude this uh, comment period. Thank you for your attendance.